Hello AME 394. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time today talking about this next assignment uh, that we have coming up. This is Snippets 2, Building a Nervous System. And if we take a look at what's here on Blackboard, you can see a breakdown of what it is that I'm asking for from you for this particular assignment. And I want to take some time just to kind of deconstruct a little bit of that so we're all on the same page, right? So we've spent some time already understanding how we can encapsulate things inside of containers, and now we're going to take that a step further so we can begin to understand why that's so important and why that modularity starts to really uh, create some exciting opportunities for us when we're programming. And to that end, what I'm asking you to do this time around is I'm asking you just to make a network that's chops. So you're only going to focus on creating a control network. And you're going to use uh, this snippet to talks file um, which I've made for you, that's the thing that you're going to control. So we don't have to worry about what we're making this time in terms of kind of a visual composition. We're only going to worry about how we're controlling it and what we're using to make that happen. So we can see here that I want you to have that encapsulated inside of a base, and that's different than a container. We'll take a look at that. Um, you need to have 10 correctly named channels, and we'll see how those channels should be formatted. I want all of those channels to be animated in some way. Now they don't have to move a lot, but I want all of them to have some movement, some animation inside of them. Your network should be well commented, so that means this time around I want more than just one readme dat. I want to have several of those because you've got 10 different channels that you're animating, and I want to have some sense of what you're up to as you're thinking about how all of those work. Uh, and then finally, your uh, network needs to contain at least one merge, rename, speed, and math chop. Now, you can use more than one of those, but I want you to have at least one of those, one of each of those, inside of your network, because those become really powerful tools in how we can manipulate um, the things that happen with chops, especially. All right, so let's take a look at this tox file. Now, a tox file is different than anything we've seen so far. We've only worked with tow files so far. So what on earth is a tox file? Okay, well, I've already downloaded that um, here. So we can see that if I take this tox file and drag, it drop, drag and drop it right here into my network, this acts essentially like a little module, right? This is a little container that holds all of the, the network information inside of it already. And we can see that I've got an input, I've got a chop in on this side, I've got a top out on this side. And if we look inside of this, we can see the network that I've already set up for you guys. Uh, including a readme that's kind of extensive here to give you a sense of what all of the, the different channels that I'm asking you to manipulate are. Okay, so how can we start to, to work with that, right? So you can, you're more than welcome to look in here and investigate how I've built this and why I've built it in the particular way that I have. Um, but you don't have to do that at all. The most important thing in here is going to be to take a very close look at this readme dat because you're going to need to know some of the information in here. So for your project, what you're going to do is you're going to create a base and that's a component. And rather than a container, you're going to select this base from this other category. And when you drop your base down, it's going to look surprisingly like a container, only it doesn't have a control panel that's associated with it. It's got fewer options for us over here uh, in terms of what's available on uh, the base's parameters pages. Uh, and we can see that there's no way for me to connect these things. So what's going on? So the first thing I've got to do is I have to go inside of this base, and I'm going to need to add an out chop. Oops and out. And we'll see once I add an out inside of my network here, I now have an out over here, which means now I could connect these two things. Um, but you'll see I'm getting a little error here, and I'm getting an error because I'm not actually, I don't have anything that's connected to that out. And we can see over here uh, in the animate, in the animate me uh, component that I've given you guys, this talks file, everything's broken, right? Because there's nothing there that's working anymore. So what's going on? So what you're going to need to do is inside of this base, you need to build a network that has 10 channels. And those 10 channels need to correspond to the names that are here inside of this constant. Um, and for in order for this to make better sense, I've gone ahead and I've given you an example file to work with. So you'll notice here on the assignment, there's also this example network. And that example network looks like this. 
let's pull it up here. So here we can see inside of this base, right? This looks pretty familiar so far. I must have an out here. I've got 10 channels that are all um, connected there. And if we dive in and take a closer look, we can see that I have, in this case, I've got a bunch of constants uh, that are all stacked together here. I use a merge to put all of those into one place, and then those plug into the out. So why do this? Why, why work this way? Well, one reason we can do this is that this now means that I could create lots of different kinds of presets or animation uh, approaches that I could then just plug in to this general form uh, component over here, right? And it also means that, let's see if I view this, this might be a great way for you to think about working on some of this, is to use the view um, command here to get a floating window. This way when we dive inside of our network over here, when I start to do things like change the amount of green or change the red channel, I can actually see what that's doing in real time. Now you'll notice that not all of these are in scales uh, that are normalized. So not all of these are about 1 to 0. Some of them are, right? So feedback certainly is, and noise is, right? And how much noise is going on here is uh, scaled normally. But like trans, translate x isn't, right? So that takes me one to the left, but it doesn't do anything for moving to the, or one to the right, but it doesn't do anything for taking me to the left other than to take me back center. Which means that you're going to have to do something like insert a math chop. Right? And in my math chop, I might specify that 0 to 1 is actually more like negative 2 to 2. And now, I've got a little more, whoops, 0 to 1. I did that backwards. <laughs> it's negative 2 to 2. There we go. Now when I move this constant, I've got a little more range of motion there. Right? So that's one thing that I, I'm going to want to consider is how I scale things. And you'll notice with all the translates and the rotate, that's going to be the case. For the rotate here, one of the things that we might think about is this might be a great place to use a speed chop. Right? We've practiced that so far. So if I insert a speed, and I use this to drive how fast the speed is going, right? That still might not be fast enough for me. And so I could... Um, scale that over here. I might use a math to do that again. And again, the incoming range of 0 to 1 is going to be an outgoing range of maybe 0 to 100. Now I can see that's actually moving a little bit more. That's got a little more spin to it. And if I turn up the amplitude of this noise even more, I might see what that looks like in a, a bigger, fancier kind of way. So that's part of what I want you to think about doing inside of this. And the last operator that I want to see you use at least once is a rename chop. We haven't talked about the rename chop a whole lot, um, but let's take a quick look at how renaming works. So if, for example, let's say uh, that in this trans x, this is just called chan1, right? So if I just add a new constant, sometimes I just get something like chan1. Or in fact, if I add something like an LFO, I get something like chan1 in there. So how can I turn this into a different name, right? So in my LFO, I could certainly change the name of it over here on the channel name. Or another way that I could approach that, I'm just going to put a null in here so we can get rid of this constant real fast. Yank. Another way to be able to address that particular challenge would be to use a rename chop. So if I insert a rename, I'm going to tell my rename chop that this little star means anything that comes in here. And in this case, I only have one thing, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. So this thing, anything that comes in, I want to change it to trans x, as in translate x. Right? And that's giving me the right name format that then connects here to my merge to make sure all of this works. We'll talk more about this assignment in class, um, but I at least wanted to give you a kind of heads up of where we're going. So what you're going to turn into me is you're going to turn in a tow file and you're going to have built your own base that's got 
10 of these channels, right? You're going to have 10 channels that are named properly this way. Um, and in addition to those names, every single one of these is going to be animated in some way. And then that will connect to this animate me component that I've made, this tox file. Right, so when you turn something in, what I should see is uh, something that looks just like this. Uh, a base that you've built connected to the component that I've built, and this moving and being animated in some interesting and new way. All right, guys, I can't, see what you, can't wait to see what you make. All right.